Jesus came for this reason. He didn't came to establish a religion. He didn't care. He didn't come. We just celebrated Christmas, right? No, he didn't come so that every year we get to celebrate Christmas. He didn't come so that every Sunday you get to come to church. You know what he said? John chapter 10, verse 10. Ang lino ng ang purpose ni Jesus for his coming. Sabi niya, I have come that you might have life and that you might have life to the fullest. Are you there? No, that, 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 that promise excites me. Knowing that God desires for me to have no, a life to the fullest, to the best. No, hindi lang yung life na parang nakaraos lang. Maybe some of you are just so happy you survived 2018. No, God doesn't just want you to survive life. God wants you to experience life to the fullest, to the best of His plans for you. Amen? Amen? No, so have plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope. Say it with me, hope. Oh, you can do better than that, guys. Say it with me, hope. I love that word, hope. I, 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 you know, my prayer is that really, no, you know, we're just literally at the beginning of the year. This is the first Sunday of the year. And I pray that, that even now, you're looking into 2019 with a sense of hope. Sa Tagalog, pag-asa. I always tell people this, mawala ng lahat sa'yo. Huwag ka lang mawawala ng pag-asa. Eh? I mean, probably, the second worst thing that can happen to a person, second to dying, is to lose hope. Right? I mean, when, <laughs> when you lose hope, it's almost like living, but at the same time, Dying. There's, there's, there's no, pag wala kang pag-asa, there's really no reason to live. That's why a lot of people, their lives are so boring. They're just going through the motions in the work, in the office, at school, in the church. No, 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 no. I hope that even here, as you come this afternoon, come tonight, you are hopeful. Sino hopeful dito? Tama ba? Right? No, that's one thing you cannot afford to lose. You cannot afford to lose hope. No, go ahead, encourage the person seated next to you. May pag-asa ka. 2019, may pag-asa ka. Right? Plans to give you a hope and a future. God does not only promise us, God does not only promise us a life full of hope. But He promises us an amazing future, an amazing destiny. That's why here at Destiny, we always tell one another, okay, may future ka, may future tayo. God has an amazing future. That's why we can look forward into 2019, full of excitement, full of hope, knowing that you know, our best years are still ahead of us. Right? Right? And that's the reason why we call ourselves Destiny. Anyway, I'm excited to share what I believe God's word for you right now, for us right now, as we start this year. I want us to pray as we go as we go into God's word. Panginoon, marami pong salamat, Lord God, for this day. And Lord, as we start this year, I pray that we start this year with a with a consecrated life. Lord, allow us to understand that this life is meant to be given to you, that it's meant to be consecrated and dedicated to your purposes and to your purposes alone. And Lord, we pray that this year, we don't only begin well, but that we finish strong. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give Lord our best clap. Praise God. So, uh, as, as I was thinking about, as I was asking God for uh, a word this Sunday, and you know, we're, we're you know, basically, we just entered 2019. Okay? And, and, and I believe it is crucial for us to start the year right. Okay? You know, have you ever noticed, bakit nga ba nagpapapotok 
sa bagong taon. To, to start the year with a bang. To start the year in celebration. No? May mga sometimes superstitious beliefs pa tayo. No? Nag-hahagis nag, uh, ng uh, coins or, or something. No? So, yun nga, because you're, you're, welcoming, you're welcoming prosperity. You want to welcome the year with, with, with excitement, with hope. No? And, and now, we don't have to be superstitious to actually have hope. We just have to look unto God's Word. Amen? Okay? And so, as, as I was wrestling, what would be, you know, what, what would be a, a title for, for, for uh, the talk this, this evening, the sermon for this evening? And I'm, okay, I'm thinking probably the best way to, a simple title, A Consecrated Life. And then I, I put in the hashtag, no, probably a subtitle, Begin Well, Finish Strong. Sabi nyo nga, a consecrated life, begin well, finish strong. Now, there is no question, no, usually at the very beginning, people are excited about stuff. No? Sino dito pag nagsisimula ka pa, nagsisimula ka pa lang, you, you cannot... Uh, no, you, you cannot take away the fact that you are excited, you're energized. It's like, it's like at the beginning of a race. When, when you're, if, if some of you have tried, uh, let's say, you know, joining a marathon, there is no question. At the start of the marathon, all the people are there, ang saya. And, and at the beginning, there's no question, you still have lots of energy. Okay? But the problem is, it's not really the beginning that counts, although... The beginning is good, okay? Kumbaga parang, ano, uh, no, you still have to have a good beginning, but it is really about how you finish. Okay? Alam yung maraming problema nang sabi nga natin, one of the wrong cultures that we have as Filipinos is yung, uh, have you heard the term, have you ever used the term or heard the term, ningas kugon? Okay? Yung, yung kugon, when you talk about kugon, no, it's, it's a, uh, uh, yung talahi biyan eh. Okay? And if, and, uh, if uh, you've seen it in the, what's this, sa probinsya, the moment yung kugo, yung talahi actually catches fire, especially during summer. Okay? It's like, just like that, yung tinatakot na brush fire, ang bilis talagang maglihab yan. In a matter of, in a matter of minutes, a couple of minutes, talagang, no, it creates a wild, crazy fire. But, as much as, no, it creates that high kind of fire. Kaya nga tinawag ng ingas kugon, ganun din sa kabilis, mamatay. Kasi there's really not much to it. Okay? There's not really much fuel to it that, no, that at the, at the beginning, it creates a wild big fire, but it dies down also that quickly. Kaya nga yung term natin, ningas kugon. A lot of us sometimes, no, we become like that. We start the year excited with a bang. We start the year well, but we don't finish strong. And so that's why I, 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 I want to I wanna start this year, not just, that, not, not, just the big, not, not just talk about the beginning, but also having the end in mind. That I want you to picture yourself at the end of 2019. You're, you're, no, you have... You have achieved, you have conquered, you have, no, you have accomplishments to yourself. You're able to finish strong. Okay. I want us to uh, go, go to our Bibles. If, if, if you can please turn, if you have your Bibles with you, there's this amazing story that can be found in Joshua chapter 3. And uh, starting from verse 2 all the way to verse 5. Joshua chapter 3, verses 2 to 5. Hey, sige. Let's, let's read this verse. No? Sabi dito, After three days, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people. And what are the orders? I mean, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priests carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Now, you need to understand, okay, God wanted the nation of Israel to advance. Okay? 
And if you are to advance in life, this is just some free insight, you have to move. Tama ba? Okay? You have to move. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, you have to move. Okay? You cannot stay the way you are. If you are going to progress, you have to move. You cannot allow yourself to be stagnant. That's, I think that's, I know, that's the problem, that's the struggle with a lot of us. Now sometimes a whole year passes by, dumaan na naman na isang buong taon, and yet, no, it's, it's kind of painful, pero sometimes, napakasakit tanggapin na no, another year has passed and we're still the same person. We haven't really improved that much. There's not really much movement in our lives. We haven't progressed. Okay? And I think the greater tragedy is the fact that tumanda ka lang. <laughs> I mean, sabi nga ng dad ko, I remember, may mga taong tumatanda pero walang pinagtatandaan. Hello? No, you, we have to move. No, sabi ni ng Lord dito, move, get out of your positions, move out of your comfort zone. Now, let me give you a background on what's going on here. Okay? Let me give you the background of the story. Okay? The nation of Israel, for the last 40 years, they have been stuck in the wilderness. What are, what, what are they doing there? No? They have been circling the deserts around Israel for the last 40 years. Now, why are they stuck of all places sa desierto? There's nothing there. <laughs> it's a desert. No? It's not, it's not a good place to live in. No, there's not much water, not much animals, not much shelter. But why would, why would somebody allow themselves na mastak? It's wanting to get stuck in Boracay, di ba? <laughs> or in a beach, maybe on a resort. But to be stuck in a desert for 40 years? Now, you need to understand what happened. Prior to this story is one of the most famous stories in the Bible. Yung kwento ng Ten Commandments or nung Exodus. You're familiar with that story? Eh? For the last 400 years, yung bayan ng Israel, they were slaves to Egypt. They were slaves of Pharaoh. But praise God, no, through, through the mighty power of God, using you know, the leadership of Moses, God started to work through Moses and raise him up as a leader, raise him up as a deliverer. The whole nation of Israel was delivered from the clutches of slavery. Eh? Now, you know, finally, they were free. And if you think about it, you know, probably one of the greatest cries of every human being is a cry for Freedom. Yung paglaya. Now, now, you might think na malaya tayo, but, but then again, it's not only, it's not only, you know, prison that, or, 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 or slavery that uh, holds us back. Eh. You know, there are people here, maybe you are in prison, no? you feel like you are under a prison of what? A prison of fear. Okay? A person of maybe you're in bondage to, to sin. Okay? And that's why Jesus came also for that reason, to set us free. Okay? That, that is a parallel story, a picture of, of what God wants to do in our lives. No? So God wanted the nation of Israel free, and finally they were free. Okay? But they were free, not just for freedom's sake. God set them free so that they can enter God's promises for them in the promised land. Now, supposedly, according to Bible scholars, yung trip from Egypt into the promised land would just be a, an, supposedly an 11-day trip journey crossing the desert. 11 days! How did it came to be that they got stuck for 40 years? Supposed to be a, just a quick journey, a quick transition from Egypt all the way to Canaan, the promised land. 11 days long. But now, it's been 40 long years. You know why? If, you know, again, just a little bit of flashback dun sa kwento. The first generation of Israelites who came out of Egypt, when God was telling them to enter the promised land, they doubted God. 
they didn't believe that God is mighty enough, is great enough to cause them to enter the promised land. It's, and it's quite ironic kasi they just came out of Egypt, which was what? The mightiest empire who had the mightiest armies at that time. They were literally a, swe- a, a slave nation. They don't have an army. And yet, they got themselves free. Literally, they, no, they crossed the Red Sea on dry ground. They saw the armies of Pharaoh drown in the Red Sea. And you might think that they have no reason to doubt that God is able. But you know what? Sad to say, they easily forgot. Ang dali nilang nakalimot dun sa mga pagkilos ng Diyos, dun sa mga ginawa ng Diyos sa buhay nila, that literally, when they were just about to enter the promised land, they, they, they spread a negative report telling everyone that there is no way we can enter the land of promise. We're gonna die here in the desert. We're gonna be eaten up by, you know, by if we even try, you no, know, we're gonna face giants in the land. We're gonna be destroyed. We're gonna die. And let me say, no, Lord, since that's what you believe, then that's what's gonna happen with you. Eh, buti na lang, no, sabi ng Lord, people 20 years below, eh, in other words, they were probably not that mature enough. They, there's a young generation who, who kumbaga, parang did not doubt. No, God told them that they were the ones to enter. Now, 40, ito na, 40 years later. Now, a lot of these people literally were even born in the desert. For the longest time in their lives, they have been used to that kind of living. It's not actually the best <laughs> to, mean to live in the desert, but somehow, they have gotten used to it. Alam mo, pag medyo nasanay ka na, mahirap ka nang gumalaw eh. Okay? Kahit na napakapangit ang sitwasyon mo, minsan, sanay ka na eh. Hindi dahil sa maganda yung sitwasyon mo, pero sanay ka na. But you know what? I believe God wants us to progress. No? So, so sabi ng Lord dito, no? go ahead, let, let's go to the verse again. Okay? Sabi ng Lord, you are to move out of your positions and follow it. Okay, verse 4. Then you will know which way to go since you have never been this way before. I, I like that. God was giving specific instructions. No? Sabi ng Lord, follow the ark. When you see me move, the ark is a picture of God. When you see me move, when you see the ark of my covenant, which is the symbol of my presence, when you see it move, follow it. Move out of your positions. Don't stay the way you are. Okay? You know why? And then sabi ng Lord, because you have never been this way before. In other words, every one of them, it was their first time. Okay? And, and, sino dito, no, sino dito nakaranas ng ano eh? when you're about to enter a new season or a new level in your life, let's say, uh, a new work. Or, how many of you still remember the, fir- the, the, the very first day you actually entered college life? Okay. Ako, maybe, uh, it, it, for me, I, I could never forget it, that, that, that transition in my life. Kasi all my life, yun nga, uh, I live in this... Uh, Literally, a, a small private school in Sambales, and there were only four sections in our, in our year level, so it's a pretty small school. Basically, everyone knows everyone, and now, you know, when, I, when I finally entered, and, and my school was literally so close to home, no? lalakarin ko lang yung, ano, yung school to buy. How many of you had schools like that and it was just a short distance and so you were very very close to family you're very close to home it was a small community you know everyone and then boom college life i i i uh, I, I took my uh I, I took my college in uh, in UP Los Baños and wow it was you no know, it was a huge university okay plus the fact it was about 5 hours drive from where I used to live. And during that time, there was no internet. There was no email. 
I remember I even used to write letters and, and para yung mga millennials kayo, hindi naintindihan yun eh. Na pag sumulat ka ng letter, it's gonna take about probably three to five days. Sometimes pag nagkaroon problema pa sa post office, one week bago kanila mabalitaan kung buhay ka pa. <laughs> e nung sinulat mo, buhay ka pa, posible pagkarating, patay ka na. <laughs> Can you imagine how crazy that world was? And so, it's, it's literally, you know, I, I can even say, I've never been this way before. I've never been in this, you know, kung baga parang it was my first time. And, and pag first time mo sa isang lugar o sa isang, isang bagong yugto ng iyong buhay, there, there are several possible emotions that you might feel. Number one is fear. I mean, I was far from home. I literally didn't know anyone in, in my campus during that, that first day. I was by myself in a dorm. I, I remember my first night. I was pretty scared. Pagkas umuulan pa, pagkatapos hindi ako nakatulog. Bakit? No, ang ingay ng mga palaka. That was UP Los Banos. It's, it's forest. It's, it's... Anyway... But also, other than fear, I felt a certain sense of adventure. Because it was something new. Tama ba? I, I hope that as we enter this year, you're actually excited about new possibilities in life. Things that you have never tasted or you've never done before. Okay? And maybe, and, and this is true for, for every one of us. No, you have never been this way before. Any one of you, okay, you've already been to 2019? Any time travelers here? No, no, no. This is literally, we've never been, we've never seen the end of 2019. This is a new thing for us. We've never been this way before. Okay? So, may mga apprehensions ka, pero more than the apprehensions, I'd like for you to be excited, you know, to, to have that sense of, of adventure. Okay? And then God you know, go, goes on to say in, in verse, you know, go, go ahead and look at verse 5. Then Joshua said to the people, he told the people, I want you to read this verse with me. One, two, three, go. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. I want you to, I want you to feel the weight of that promise. Sabi ng Lord dito, sabi ng Lord, Joshua was telling the people, this is what the Lord told Joshua, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow. Tomorrow means in the future. I will do amazing things. First of all, how many of us believe that our God is an amazing God and that He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than you could ever ask or think or imagine? Here's the problem with religion. Okay? People come to church, but they never experience how amazing God is. That for them, God is more of a figment of imagination, just routine lang, pero hindi, wala yung reality na talagang nararanasan mo yung pagpapala, pagkilos at milagro ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Hey, hey, I want you to understand, the God that we serve, the God I serve, is a miracle-working God. He's an amazing God. Amen ba? Hey, now, yun nga eh, it, no? when, 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 Joshua was telling the nation of Israel, you know, the rest of the nation of Israel, that God was going to do amazing things you know, in their lives. That was not without reference. God, even in the desert, has been doing amazing things. Now, just to let you know, God didn't just abandon them in the desert. He was with them. No, sabi sa Bible, that God, alam mo sa desert, walang puno. You're gonna die of extreme heat. How do they, that, that itself, surviving the desert, raising families in the desert for the last 40 years is a miracle. How did that happen? You know how, how the Lord guided him? Sabi, God 
sheltered them by a pillar of cloud by day. Literally, where the nation of Israel were. They were camped out. They were spread out in the desert. And yet, they didn't feel the, the heat of the desert sun. You know why? There was always a cloud over them. Isn't that amazing? In the evening, the pillar of cloud will turn into what? A pillar of fire. It's like a huge bonfire. <laughs> they felt like champions every day. <laughs> Imagine there's, there are 600,000. No, historians believe that the number of Israelites were between 600,000 to 2 million. 600,000! Sa pabalagay natin, minimalist tayo, 600,000. Imagine how, how huge 600,000 people are. And in the middle of them was this huge pillar of fire. That is amazing. Ano pa isang ginawa ng Diyos sa kanila? How did they survive the desert? There, there's, no, there's no, you cannot farm in the desert. There's no animals that are readily available in the desert. Pero alam mo ginawa ng Diyos? Every day, every day, sabi doon, God would rain manna, a special bread from heaven. All they have to do is pick up manna, this heavenly bread. Read your Bibles. That's what it said. Every day. No, they, they never hungered in the desert. What else? Ito, here's what's amazing. Sabi, their clothes... Never grew old. In fact, it grew with them. Kaling! Can you imagine? No, hindi mo kailangan mag, yung sa mga taong ayaw magpalit. Okay? Magpalit ka na! No, yung mga pagbata ko, magpalit ka na! Okay? Gabi, yung mga anak noon, hindi siya nagpapalit ng damit. Pero yung damit niya tumutubo with them. That's what the Bible says. Now, if that were not amazing enough, as if to say, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow, in the next couple of days, I'm going to do more amazing stuff. Okay? We have an amazing God. The last 20, 28 years of my life, you know, from the time I gave my life to Lord, I've seen how amazing God is. How he worked in my life, my family, the provision, the blessing, how, how the Lord raised up this church. God is an amazing, the healings, the, the supernatural things you know, that, that God has, has brought about. But you know what? God is not done yet. Sabi ng Lord, I'm going to do amazing things. But hey. I want you to understand that in the Bible, and daming pangako ng Diyos. Pero bakit maraming tao, they never get to experience the promises of God. Because here's what you need to understand. For every promise, and the Bible is full of promises, for every promise, there is, there is always a premise. When you read, pag nagbasa ka ng Bible, mapapansin mo yan. From now on, okay, one of the things that you need to look for, may, may promise bang Lord? What is the Lord promising me? What is the Lord promising you? And you'll realize there are so many promises. But for every promise, there is a premise. Sabi nyo nga, premise. Sa bawat promise, may premise. Ano yung premise? In other words, there is a condition. Okay? And you might think like, okay, why, why is there a condition? You know, we, we do this a lot. Like in, in my family, you know, like for example, ma, ma, when, when my my kid, my daughter, example, my, my youngest daughter, si, si Catherine, sometimes she wants to watch, let's say, uh, a movie. So it's uh, TV. Okay? Dad, I want to watch a movie. I want to watch TV. Okay, okay you're going to watch a movie, but first, finish your food. Ginagawa ba na magulang sa inyo Why? So that you don't get spoiled. Right? And God, God is like that. No? Sabi ng Lord dito, I'm going to do amazing things about amazing things to you. But what's the condition? Consecrate. So you want to consecrate. Now, what does that mean? Maybe maybe for for a number of us it's it's a word that's pretty deep, no yung it's just being used in religious circles, but but Consecration is a very, very practical word. 
Okay? Let me explain this. What does it mean? Why does God want us, want His people to have lives that are consecrated? Okay? And I realize ko nga dito, it's not that God does not or cannot do amazing things in your life. Is it possible? Kaya wa, di mo nararanasan yung amazing things ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Kasi you never met the requirement of a consecrated life. Don't blame God if you're not experiencing amazing things. Maybe, just maybe, is it even possible that you lie? You never, you never live out a life that is consecrated to Him. Okay? Because I believe that if we, if we adhere to, to God's commands, there is no question we will experience His blessing. No? To, to help us better, no, I, I, uh, I want to read a portion of an article that I, I googled. No? What does the Bible say about consecration? Ano nga ba tong word na to? Okay? In the Bible, the word consecration means the separation of oneself from things that are unclean especially anything that would contaminate one's relationship with God. Okay? Let me repeat that. Sa Bible po, ang ibig sabihin daw ng consecration is separation of oneself from things that are unclean. Okay? Especially anything that would contaminate one's relationship with God. No? To separate, to, to, to consecrate means, okay, tagalugin natin. Pag sinabi niyo kinoconsecrate, ibig sabihin niyan to separate or to set apart. Ihinihiwalay. Okay? Isinantabi. Okay. Sino na dito, for example, nung Pasko, nakatulog ka? <laughs> nung saktong noche buena, dahil sa pagod mo, kahanda o kakarap ng regalo, natulugan mo. Okay? At gising silang lahat. Pero praise God, sabi ng nanay mo, sabi ng tatay mo, Oy, Ipagtabi nyo si ano, ha? Yun nga, ibig sabihin doon, isinantabi, ihiniwalay. Di, no, it, kung baga pa, oh, huwag nyo gagalawin yan. Okay? Pinagtabi ko si ano. Bakit? Ibig sabihin noon, mahalaga ka. Ibig sabihin noon, special ka na merong inilaan, isinantabi, ikinonsecrate para sa'yo. Na walang pwedeng kumain noon, walang pwedeng gumalaw noon, Dahil yun ay para sa'yo lamang. So, ang ibig sabihin ng consecration, yun nga, eh, yung, yung buhay mo, eh, isang tabi mo para lamang sa gamit ng Diyos. Okay? To set your life apart, to, yun nga, eh, sabi dito, to separate yourself from anything that is unclean. Ang pag sinabing unclean, no, the picture is sin. Sin defiles us. Sin makes our lives unclean. Sin is, in the eyes of God, it is filthy, it is dirty. Eh? And so you want to you wanna separate yourself from anything that is making your life wrong, making your life defi- no, defiling you, contaminating your relationship with God. No? Consecration also carries with, carries with it the connotation of sanctification, holiness, and purity. God calls us to a life of holiness. Ang pagtawag ng Diyos sa atin is to live a holy, consecrated life. And it's nothing. You might think na parang it's, it's, it, it, it is not religious. To be holy is not to be religious. Because for all you know, there are lots of people who are religious but are never holy. Bakit, by the way, tayo tinatawag ng Diyos na maging holy? Sabi ng Diyos, no? Be holy. For I am holy. Why does God require of us holiness? Sabi niya, be holy for I am holy. Because you need to understand, God's original purpose for you and me, bilang mga tao is to what? How are we made? We are made in the exact image and likeness of God. Walang ibang nilika, walang ibang hayop. No, na nilika ng Diyos sa wangis niya. Bakit, bakit ginawa ng Diyos na kamukha tayo? So that we can reflect God in this physical world. Okay? We are to be a representation, a manifestation of God, His goodness. Now, ang problema, 
no hindi natin ma kumbaga, hindi natin ma-represent ng todo yung 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 uh, kaluwalhatian yung glory yung yung beauty ng Diyos pag tayo ay makasalanan yung nga eh we defile ourselves eh na mi-misrepresent natin ang Diyos that's why he calls us to holiness but not only that because if we are holy if we are consecrated no we become vessels whereby God is able to work in us and through us. Whereby we can experience amazing things. Amen. Amen. Okay? That if we are, if we are to begin well and finish strong, we need to understand it, is, it has to be a life consecrated wholly to Him. Siguro another way of explaining consecration is uh, ano eh, yung, yung kasal. No? Kaya sinasabi natin na ang kasal sagrado, consecrate, sacred. Bakit siya nagiging sacred? Kasi pag nagpakasal ka, no, ang sinasabi mo, dun sa vow mo, na itong katawang ito, itong pagkataong ito, ay isinantatabi mo para dun sa pinakamamahal mo. Wala, oh, di ba? Eh, meron ba dito, Meron ba dito, kunyari, may gusto magpakasal sa'yo, pero sabi ng, sabi nung ano, mapapangasawa mo, by the way, may ka-share ka sa heart ko, ah. Any one of you here willing to share the heart of your husband or your wife to somebody else? No. Because really, the vow of marriage is to, yun nga, to set apart your heart, to literally cut off, Okay? your relation, kung ikaw ay lalaki, to cut off, no, that this heart, this body, even sexually, no, is to be made exclusive, set apart for your wife. It's consecrated for your wife. And the, 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 if you're a woman, now your body, your mind, your thoughts, your heart is totally sacred and exclusive for your husband. That's, that's, no, that's the beauty of marriage. No, that's a picture, probably one of the best pictures of consecration. Okay? In the same way, we cannot have a rival throne in our heart with our relationship with God. That's why God, no, one, of, one of the major symbolisms or references to us as a church is we are the bride of Christ. Amen. To be set apart. Okay? And that's... that's that's what consecration is. But how do we live our lives consecrated before God? How do we have a consecrated life? In Ephesians, I believe the Apostle Paul gives us some very practical things. Outlines us how we are to live a, con a consecrated life. And then I'll give you three things, three keys to living a consecrated life. Let's read Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 to 18. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 to 18. Okay, sige, basahin natin. No? Sabi dito, Be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but wise. Interesting verse. Okay. Paul is encouraging us. Paul is telling us in his letter to Ephesians, sabi niya, be very careful in the way you live. Not as unwise, but wise. Now, wh why do you think Paul is telling us that? Possibly because there are a lot of people who are living their lives unwisely. And, and how many of you, you have friends na parang hindi nag -isip? Parang yun nga eh, they did not live their lives wisely. Are you there? Wag, wag mo nang tingnan yung katabi mo, please lang. Eh, okay na yung kunyari, hindi mo sila kilala. Eh? This is a powerful exhortation. What, what, what is Paul saying? Is, hey, live your life carefully, not, not as unwise, not as people who do not think, who have no regard of their decisions or choices, but wisely, okay? 
And then he goes on to say, sabi niya, sige, let's continue. Making the most, I want you to read this with me. One, two, three, go. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Wow. Again, pretty interesting what, what Paul is suggesting here. Sabi niya, live your lives as wise, not as unwise. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Go ahead. Next verse. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Understand, find out what is His will for your life. Not just what you want to do. Not just, hindi lang yung ano gusto mo. Yun nga eh, mahalaga siguro na, no, malaman natin, ano ba yung plano, ano ba yung kalooban ng Diyos sa buhay natin, hindi lang yung ikaw masunod. No, to understand the Lord's will. Okay? Next, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Three keys to consecration. Number one, be careful with your walk. Be careful with your walk. In the New King James Version, verse 15 is, uh, is written like this. No? New King James Version, sabi dito, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. No, katulad din nung sinabi natin kanina, okay, be careful in how you live. Okay? But here the word used was the word walk. Sabi niyo walk. Sabi ni Paul, ingatan mo daw yung lakad mo. In fact, that's the, the literal word that was used in the Greek. Bakit Greek? Our, our Bibles, the original New Testament was written in Greek. That was the language of that day. And so, the word walk actually is the word parapiteia. Okay? Parapiteo. No? Now, yung walk dito, hindi ito tinutukoy yung no, simply making a stroll. Or we had a, we had a nice walk at the Akad Oval. Yan. No? We had a romantic walk by the beach. No, no. This is not the kind of walk that is meant here. It's not a stroll. Okay? But more importantly, it talks about what? Parapiteo does not mean taking a stroll, but more importantly, the way we conduct our lives. In other words, the way we behave. Okay. What does it involve? You may want to write this down. Our walk, yung lakad natin, involves our choices. The choices that we make. In other words, it involves the direction which our lives are taking. It, it, it involves, yun nga eh, where are you going? Ano? Saan ka patutungo? Saan ka paroroon? Saan ang direksyon ng buhay mo? Kasi nga maraming tao ngayon, yun nga eh, walang sense of direction. Okay? Walang saysay, no? ligaw. Okay? Nawawala, walwal. Eh? Why? Hindi ba pag nagwal, yung, yung term nga, nagwalwal yan eh. Yun na parang, no, these are people who didn't, doesn't even look into their lives and examine or they are not careful. No? Ba bakit kaya sinabi, in fact, if you, you want to write this, highlight those words, no? no? See then that your walk, no? see then that you walk circumspectly or, no, be careful with how you live. New Living Translation says, be careful with how you live. Okay? Highlight that word, be careful. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, be careful. Ano ibig sabihin ng be careful? Sa Tagalog, pag-ingatan. Okay? Anong picture ng isang taong maingat? Kunyari, no? O kunyari itong ano, di ba? Pag pinag-iingatan mo yung laptop, itong iPad, di ba? Hinihita mo, dahan-dahan mong pinapatong kasi maingat ka. Hindi mo pinag-iingatan. <laughs> Tama? Hindi pa daskol. Hindi pa dalos-dalos. Pag sinabi nyo, ano, marahan, maingat. Eh? In fact, the voice translation says it this way. In the voice translation of the Bible, be mindful of your steps. I, I like that word. 
that the voice translation use. Be mindful. Ano ibig sabihin ng mindful? From the word mind, ano ba yung mind? Utak, isip. In other words, sabi dito, okay, be mindful, ibig sabihin, pag-isipan mo daw ang bawat hakbang mo. Sino na dito napahama ka dahil no, hindi mo tinignan yung hakbang mo? Natisod ka kasi, yun nga, hindi mo, hindi, no, hindi mo tinignan, meron na palang butas. May, hagdana na pala, ay, ay, di ba? Eh? Bakit? Simple lang. Kaya ka na aksidente, hindi ka nag-ingat. Narealize ko to eh. The number one cause of accidents, whether road accidents or accidents at home, is what? People were not careful. Why were they not careful? They were most likely hurrying. You have a hurried life. Eh? An overloaded life. And I had a, a minor but painful accident in, literally right after New Year. It was January 2, and uh, I, have a, I have a meeting, uh, an early meeting at, uh, actually it was, a, I was invited to give a talk in, in, one, of our, in one of the companies of one of our uh, members, and it was a flag ceremony talk. So they were going to pick me up, I think, sometime around 7 a.m. And so I got ready, I got, you know, I took a bath, dressed myself up, and when I look at the watch, I realize it's, it's about five minutes, no, five minutes, supposedly, bago dumating yung susundo sa akin, yung magpipick up sa akin. And I thought, five minutes, eh, problema, hindi pa ako nakapagkape. One of my daily routines is, I, I, I want to have a cup of coffee. Coffee is life. <laughs> and so, now, ako, now the, the problem is, hindi ako instant coffee. I, 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 I grind my own coffee. Okay? I have coffee beans. I grind my own coffee. And then I brew my own coffee freshly. I have an espresso maker and another brewer. You know, and, and yung ginamit ko na brewer, na pang brew ng kape ko, it's, it's, you know, uh, it was given to me by my aunt. No, it's, it's not actually, I've, I don't, I have not seen anything here that's for sale. It's para siyang flask. You know, if you have you know, a flask, Okay? Tapos may funnel. Tapos drip. Ang tawag dito is drip kind. No? So, in other words, no, ilalagay mo yung freshly ground coffee beans dun sa parang imbudo, dun sa funnel. Pagkatapos, nandun yung filter. Pagkatapos, magpapakulo ka ng ano, yun na, mainit na tubig, yung bagong kulo, ibubuhos mo dun sa kape. Pagkatapos, yun, hihintayin mo dahan-dahang, ano, tumulo yung kape. Okay? Then, tsaka mo ngayon lalagay sa tasa mo. So, yun na, nagpakulo na ako. Pero dahil nga, iniisip ko, five minutes, darating na yung anong, sundo ko, five minutes. Mayat maya, tinitingnan ko, baka nakakaya kasi baka hindi ko mapansin. Tumitingin ako sa labas, tinitingnan ko, tumatahol ba yung aso namin. Kasi nagmamadali ako. Tagkatapos, yun na, napatulo ko na eh. May kape na dun sa pinaka-flask, ilalagay ko na, isasaling ko na sa tasa. Ang problema, dahil nga nagmamadali ako, hindi ko na mahantay na maubos. So, in other words, meron pang, meron pang, uh, mayroon pang pinagalong kape at mainit na tubig dun sa pinaka-imbudo, hindi pa, hindi pa siya totally naubos, pero gusto ko na ibuo sa tasa ko. Okay? So, ginawa ko, kinuha ko na, tapos nilagay ko na dun sa tasa ko para ready ko na inumin. Problema nga, hindi pa tapos. Ang nangyari, natilansikan ako ng konti, konti lang, konti lang, konting tilansik lang, e mainit. Yung konting yun, di ba, kunyari na tilansikang ka, ano reaksyon ng kamay mo? Ah! Di ba? Ayun, bumuhos yung, ayan. Eh, it's like, buti na lang nakalong sleeve ako, yung kape, yung, yung mainit na kumukulong tubig, dito lahat, nagpalit pa ako, pero yung masakit nun, eh, napaso ako, second degree burn. Eh, masakit, no? And, napatagal pa tuloy, kumalat yung kape, tas ataranta ako, hindi ko alam ang gagawin ko. No, ang sakit eh. Okay. Pero na-realize ko, kaya ako napahamak, kaya ako napaso, kasi hindi ako careful. I was hurried. I was in a hurry. I was hurrying. I, I had my life overloaded with stuff. At that moment, I was trying to cram five minutes into 
preparing myself and getting coffee and, and hoping that you know, the person picking me up is not yet there. I, I was scurrying. Now, this is nothing. It's painful, but it's just a coffee accident. There are far more worse things in life than a coffee accident. You want me to name a few? Relationship accidents. Ako, mas masakit makapaso yun. Ah, sakit makapaso nun. Yung minadali mo, yung love life, na ako. Pag doon ka napaso, aray, aray, aray. Bakit? Hindi careful. Sinabi na nung hala, nung kanta eh. Please be careful with my heart. Diba? Sabi na nga doon sa kante, Wise men say, Only fools rush in! Sinabi na nga daw ng mga taong may wisdom, ng mga wise men. No? Fools rush in, fools nagmamadali. Pero ang problema, niromanticize natin yon. But I can help falling in love with you. Haller. <laughs> Yan. Sige. Ang mahirap yung mali na niromanticize mo. But I can help. No? No? Kung baga parang ano eh. No? Tinalo yung sinabi ng mga wise men. Anong kapalit? Paso. Sinong napaso dito sa ano? Sa finansya, sa finances. Five years ago pa, nagbabayad ka pa ng utang mo five years ago. Bakit? Hindi mo pinag-isipan. Binili mo, nag-invest ka. Sabi kasi sa'yo, no, babalik ka agad. Tanga. <laughs> That's the word! Foolish. Ang ganda lang pakinggan sa English, eh. foolish. But then, we, yun nga, we were not careful. You know, one of the things that I've, through the years, praise God, I'm learning, I'm not perfect yet, but somehow I've learned at least a little to be careful with my post. Daddy, I'm, I'm so rash. I, I don't even think about what I post. I, what? No. The moment I feel something and I believe, no, with all conviction pa yan, nangigigil, talagang makikipag-away pa ako sa Facebook. <laughs> to, you know, parang ano may, pakiramdam mo, talagang pinaglalaba mo pa yung katuwiran. Yan. <laughs> but then I realized, a lot of things I posted were not things that are well thought of. Pero yun nga, minsan nasabi mo na eh, na-post mo na eh. Mahirap pag hindi pinag-iisipan. Kaya pala sabi dito, be careful with the manner in how which you live. Tama ba? Sino dito, may mga binili ka hindi mo pinag-iisipan. Just the fact na sale. Yan eh. eh ito, 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 no? To be careful, na-realize ko to be careful, does not only involve sometimes your own decision eh. In fact, to be careful sometimes has to involve, yun nga, pag nag-iingat ka, hindi mo lang binabantayan yung sarili mo, pero inaalaw mo ibang tao na pag-ingatan ka, bantayan ka. I-check ka, mahalagay accountability. Okay? Itong ano, itong Christmas, no? a couple of months ago, nung birthday ng anak ko, si Sam, naalala ko kasi nung gusto niya ng Adidas. So, tinignan ko yung website ng Adidas sa, sa internet. Alam niyo nangyari? Simula noon hanggang ngayon, lahat ng Facebook, every time magbabasa akong Facebook, mayroong ad na lumalabas ng Adidas. Alam mo, galing ni Facebook eh. No? All-knowing na siya ngayon eh. Alam niya na yung mga iniisip mo eh. So, maya at maya na dyan, Adidas. Nakalunod niya talaga. Tapos recently, may napansin ako, Adidas sale. Klinik ko, mayroon ako isang nakitang sapatos. Sale, Adidas, 50% off. Wow. Eh, pero, I want to be someone who is careful. Yan. Careful ako. So, ang ginawa ko, pinag-isipan ko muna. Sabi ko, 
Gusto ko ba talaga to? Ang sagot, gusto ko. <laughs> Kinunbins ko sa iyo, gusto ko. Okay? Sabi ko, mura ba? Sale. <laughs> hindi, hindi, hindi siya nagot kumure, no? Sale, mas mura siya ngayon. No? So, eventually, kinonsult ko yung aking pamilya. Kinausap ko yung dalawang anak ko, si Sam sa si Julia. Si Sam, sabi ko, Sam, tingnan mo nga ito, sapatos mo. Oh, mga ganda, di ba? Anak, 50%. Sabi nung anak ko, Dad, Dad, bili mo na yan, bili mo na yan. Praise God, praise God. <laughs> diba, nakakatawa. Napaka-encouraging na aking anak. Yung mas panganay, si Julia, tinignan niya, sabi, more on whether bibiling ko or not, ang tinignan niya kung anong kulay. Sabi niya, Dad, ako, mas gusto ko kasi yung medyo light, eh, yung, yung light blue, yung red. Ikaw, sabi niya, ganun, kaya mo naman dalin yung red, no? pero ako medyo yung light blue, parang ayoko masyadong ano eh, parang striking or obvious yung color. Sabi, okay, okay. Hindi ko naman kinukonsult yung bunso ko. Six years old. Si, si Catherine, six years old. All of a sudden, he gets into the conversation and I got, I got shocked. You know what? She, no, I'm not kidding. No, my, my, my wife, my, no, my two other, my two other uh, children, Sam and Julia are witness. This is what Catherine said. Sabi niya, Dad, you don't need it. You just want it. <laughs> and I pretended I didn't hear it. I, Oh my goodness, the wisdom of a six years old. <laughs> Dad, you don't, you don't just, you don't need it, you just want it. How many of us, many times, we bought things that we didn't carefully thought about, not even because kailangan mo, dahil lang kasi gusto mo. Hindi mo naman kailangan ng girlfriend eh, gusto mo lang. Actually, ang kailangan mo, kailangan mo mag-aral. Kailangan mo magtapos. Maaring hindi mo gusto mag-aral, pero kailangan mo. Ang problema, eh, gusto mo ng girlfriend, hindi mo kailangan. Doon tayo napapahamak. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, be careful. Be careful. Be careful with what? Be, caref- be careful with your choices. Be careful with what you post. Be careful with what you read. Hey, every now and then, you know, one of the things that I, I, I end up doing, every now and then, I, I, I end up correcting some of my friends, some of the members in the church, with regarding to things that they post. Because sometimes a lot of us, we never even consider what we were posting when it's so obvious. All you have to do, total naman, andun ka na sa internet, nagpe-Facebook ka na, bago mo i-share, i-Google mo muna kung totoo o hindi. Ibang maging biktima ng fake news, iba rin yung ano, okay? yung ikaw na, yung namamahagi ng fake news, dakit, bakit hindi mo verify Because you were not careful enough. Are you there? It, it doesn't mean that it simply see, suits your, your needs or it suits your, your way of thought. You want to share it. Check it out. Verify. Be careful. Amen? Hindi naman masamang mag-ingat eh. Bigyan ng extra ingat ang mga ba pag-iisip natin, pananalita. Kasi hindi ito may sinabi kayo nga niregret mo sabihin, niregret mo after a while. Nakasakit ka, nasaktan nanay mo, nasaktan anak mo, hindi mo na mabawi. Bakit? Hindi ka maingat. Ano pa? Saan ka dapat mag-ingat? Ano yung mga nakikita mo? Ano yung tinitingnan mo? Hey, the eyes is the window to the soul. Hey, pornography damages you. That's a fact. That's a scientific fact. Hey? No, kaya, kaya yung old nursery rhyme, di ba? Oh, be careful little eyes what you see. 
Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. For the Father up above is looking down in love. Be careful with your eyes. Be, be, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Ingat ka sa mga nakikita mo. Hindi lahat tinitingnan. Are you there? Okay? Yung mga anak natin, da, da, ako, no? may mga narinayas ko pag hindi appropriate, pa, may, minsan may mga palabas, na hindi pa talaga appropriate na makita ng bata. No? Si, si Catherine, okay? pag mayroon ko niya nagahalikan, talaga, oo. Oh, oh. okay? Bakit? That's not, that's not for her age. Don't assume na, wala yan. Hello? Tama ba? Be careful. Examine your life. Okay. How, what, what, what do we mean by to, to be careful is yun nga, to wag hurry. To, to examine is to to have time. Okay? Socrates, some even believe it was Plato, said, an unexamined life is a life not worth living. Let me repeat that. An unexamined life is a life not worth living. Hey, one of the best things that you can do for yourself, especially at the start of the year, examine 2018. Maybe some of you, di ba pastor, forget the past. Totoo, forget the past. Ang problema, marami sa atin, no, kinalimutan natin pati yung mga supposedly lessons na dapat alam mo na. Eh, kaya anong nangyari, inulit mo lang yung katangahan mo noong 2018. <laughs> inulit mo lang ulit, bakit? Eh, sabi, forget, pati yung, mga, pati yung mali, kinalimutan mo, pati yung life lessons, hindi. Reflect. Yung nga, nagkamali ka na nga eh. So isipin mo, ano yung ginawa ko mali? Eh, Reverend Edmund Chan, one of the pastors that we highly respect, no? he, he has what you call a, a think time. He has this discipline that every day of his life, he literally spends four hours of what he calls think time. Yung nga, in our day and age, there's this tendency to, to get hurried, to overload our... No, which is marami naman dyan, talaga mga walang kwentang bagay. Can you imagine, no? the time we spend sometimes just, just browsing over Facebook or our news feeds. Okay? When you can change that, you could replace that with something more helpful, like really thinking. Okay? Sabi mo sa katabi mo, mag ka din. <laughs> Ang marami sa atin ayaw na mag-isip eh. eh. This is how Edmund Chan practices it. And I'm thinking, I'm, gonna, I'm probably, I'm, I'm going to adopt it but more, or a more shorter version. No? Sabi, he spends four hours in his think time. Sabi niya, first hour, he reads. On the first hour, he spends one hour every day simply reading. Bakit? Sabi niya, why, why, why does he spend hour, one hour reading? Because no, reading stimulates your thinking faculties. You get to, yun pag nagbabasa ka, you get to think. No? Your mind is steered. Okay? So he spends an hour reading a good book. Okay? Reading the Bible or reading, yun nga, a helpful book. Okay? Something, not just read news, read, but reading something that's worth reading, reading a book. Pagkatapos, sabi niya, in the next two to three hours, the second phase, the second, the, the second to third hour, he thinks about what he has just read. Kabe two hours. Pagkatas nila magbasa na isang oras, upo lang sa doon at pagbubulay-bulay niya yung mga nabasa niya. Pag-iisipan niya. Alam niyo pag narinig niyo itong mamang ito? Okay, for those of you who have, who have heard him speak, walang sayang na salita eh. Ang lalim, ang ang sustansya ng binibitawang wisdom. Kasi alam niyo bakit? Yun nga eh. Na, eh, na process, prenoseso. Tapos pang sabi dito, and on the fourth hour, he writes down what he has, no, what he has thought about and what he has read about. 
Okay, now I'm not, I'm not saying that we do this. If we good, if you can, but maybe maybe just shorten. Like maybe if you're not, if you cannot read an hour for some of us, an hour reading is gonna torture us. Okay, then then start with what? If you can read, five minutes. Then just, just you no, know, put down your book, put down your Bible, and think about it. Meditate on what you have just read. Think your thoughts through just, just the next 10 minutes. And maybe for the next 5 minutes, 20 minutes lang. Sulat, no, yung, yung huli, 5 minutes, sulat mo, ano yung natutunan mo. Okay. As, I was, as I was preparing for this message and I was looking up for, for, for quotations, no, I, uh, I ended up uh, serendipitously, no, seeing this particular quote about writing. And I'd like to share it with you. There's this guy by the name of Kilroy Olster from his book, Dead Toad Scrolls. And he said something about writing that we should, uh, we should take note of. Sabi niya dito, writing allows a person to explore both physical reality and the internal workings of their mind. This is how important writing is. That's why here we encourage people not just to read your Bibles, but to actually what? Do journaling. Okay? No. Okay? To, to, yun nga, to, to write down. Why? Sabi, may, may ginagawa daw yung writing. It allows a person to explore both the physical reality and the internal workings of their mind. Writing places, places us in touch with our unconsciousness. Okay. Writing purposefully, applying the white heat of self-examination can act to transform oneself. You know, nare- okay. na-realize mo, pag ikaw nagsulat, pag sinusulat mo mga bagay na narinig mo, okay, at the moment na nagsusulat ka, may nangyayari din, napapa-examine ka lalo dun sa narinig mo eh. Napapaisip ka. Na, ako, I've always used this illustration. Sa school, may dalawang klase tao. Dalawa, no? Simplify stuff. You can classify people na nag-aaral, dalawang klase, matatalino, bobo. <laughs> and you know what is the main difference? Yung matalino, yung matatalino, I promise you, these are the people taking down notes. Yung bobo, nagpapapotokabi lang. Now, check this out. Ang nireview ng matalino, matalino at ng bobo, same notes. Bakit? Yung bobo, pinapotokabi yung notes ng matalino. Pero bakit sa score, Hindi niya makuha yung score ng matalino. Kasi pag nagsulat ka, pag notes mo, okay, di hamak na mas tumatanim yan sa, sa isipan mo. Eh. Okay? Lumalalim eh, habang nagsusulat ka. Okay? Mas lalo mong naintindihan, mas lalo niya nagkakaroon ka ng self-examination. Yan na-realize ko, sinadya ng Diyos na Di hamak na mas mabagal ka magsulat kaysa magsalita. Kaya nga di ba pag kunyari nagsasal, ay sir, sir ano nga yun? Dahan-dahan naman, dahan-dahan naman. Okay? Kasi hindi mo talaga masabayan yung sinasabi dun sa sinusulat eh. E nariyayos ko, sinadya ng Diyos yun, na mas di hamak na mas mabagal ka magsulat. Bakit? Kasi habang sinusulat mo isang bagay, may tendency ka, may capacity ka na mas lalo mong mapag-isipan nito. Di mo, wala nang halagay saltang I love you. Bakit po salta? I love you, I love you, I love you. Subukan mo isulat yan. I love you. Wala. Nangaramdaman niyo, malalim, di ba? Kasi sinulat mo eh. Inukit mo eh. Read. Think. Be careful how you live. Number two. The second key to consecrating our lives before God is to consecrate our time. If you go back to the verse in Ephesians chapter 5, sabi dito, in verse 16, the New King James Version says, Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Redeeming the time. In the New Living Translation, sabi dito, 
rather than using the word time. Now, the word time in the Greek, the word time in the Greek has two words. The Greeks have two words for time. One is the word chronos, and the other is the word kairos. Ano pinagkaiba nun? Bakit dalawa ang terminology ng Greek language pagdating sa oras? Yung isa ang term nila, chronos. Yung isa, kairos. Pero sa, sa, sa saling English, time lang ang ibig sabihin nun. Chronos is your watch time. Chronos. No? What chronos is it? No? What time is it? Eh, ano oras na? Yung kairos, hindi yun, hindi yun parang yung, 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 yung ano, watch time. Kairos means an opportune time. Ibig sabihin, it's, it's, it's a moment that you cannot afford to miss. No? Pag sinabi mo, iba yung anong oras na, tinatanong mo yung oras, di ba? Saka yung oras na. I mean, it's time! It's now or never! And this is what, the, what, what, what Paul was saying here, what God is telling us through the Apostle Paul. Redeem your time. Because the days are evil. In other words, no, okay, time is not always with you. Okay? You know, I, I realize, remember when, you were, when we were little kids, no, we cannot wait. A five-year-old cannot wait till he's six. Ang, tag- ang tagal ko naman mag-six, di ba? Di ba? Pero pag 45 ka na, bakit ang bilis mag-46? <laughs> Pansin niyo, at a certain point sa edad mo, Parang ang bilis ng panahon. Grabe, 2018, 2019 na! 2020, na! You know why? Because we realize, you no know, time is passing. And if you are not careful with the use of your time, if you are not, yun nga eh, if you are not making use of every opportunity, guess what? You'll be surprised. Tumanda ka na. A whole year has passed and you realize you haven't really achieved anything. The 2018, for most of us, it has just become a wasted year. I mean, you went through the motions, nag-aral ka pa rin, nagtrabaho ka, pero wala yung sense na wow. Bakit? Kasi nga, hindi mo na make, yun nga, you were not able to what? Make use of every opportunity. No, that's why, check this out, no? This, this verse in Psalms. Beautiful verse, Psalm 39, verse 4 to 5. The psalmist writes a prayer, writes a song to the Lord. Let's read this. I want you to read this with me all together. And read it as if you're the one. It's a prayer before God. One, two, three, go. Lord, remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered. How fleeting my life is. What a prayer. I mean, Lord, remind me that I don't have all the, I don't have time on my side. That my days are fleeting. That my days are actually numbered. Okay? No, in verse 5, sabi niyan, You have made my life no longer than the width of my hand. My entire lifetime is just a moment to you. At best, each of us is but a breath. Wow. If you are able to look at your life na parang, yun nga, hininga lang eh. Then you're gonna what? You're gonna value more. The time where you spent it. Okay? Hey, if you are to add up all the days, all the hours that you spend, for example, watching a telenovela or all the times you watch a movie, I'm not saying those things are wrong. But is it possible that you could have made much more better of those times? that you could have actually improved yourself. No? And sabi sa Psalm 90 verse 12, teach us to realize the brevity of life so that we may grow in wisdom. The voice translation says, teach us to number our days so that we may truly live and achieve wisdom. 
you know, J- James chapter 4, verse 13 to 14, sabi dito, Come now, who say, today or tomorrow. Now, what is James trying to say here? He's, he's trying to picture people na sometimes they are so arrogant about, about their lives, thinking that, you know, this feeling that you're invincible na, kumbaga parang, no? Nasabi nila dito, no? May mga tao ganito mag-isip. Bukas o sa makalawa, no? Pupunta tayo sa ganito. We will go to such and such a city. Spend a year there. Buy and sell. Relax. Make a profit. Ang sabi ni James, Where us? You do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It's even but a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Hey, hey. Make use of your time. Redeem your time. You know, what is the best time probably in, in your life? And, and I, I'd like to encourage young people, no? There's a reason why in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1, sabi dito, no, this is Solomon, and in all his wisdom said this, Remember your Creator. In the days of your youth, before the days of your trouble come, and in the years of approach when you will f- say, I find no pleasure in them. Hey, what is the... No, hey, I'm, I'm not really that young anymore. And I still believe that the best years of my life are ahead of me. But physically speaking, what is the optimum year in a person's life is when you're young. Kaya sabi dito, no, sabi ni, ni Solomon, no, remember your Creator in the days of your youth when you're young, when you have that energy to serve God, when you literally have time. Because a young person has really more time than when you're already a family person, when you're already consumed by a job, a work. Hey, you know, when I was 17 years old, there was not a day in my life that I did not attend the daily 5.30 a.m. prayer meeting in UP Los Banos every day. Exam or no exam. Why? Because I understood how to make use of my time, to consecrate my time, to dedicate that time to my God, to use the best years no, of my life serve God. Sabi nga, di ba, yung, 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 yung mga kabataan may, may hashtag, may word na pinauso, YOLO. You only live once. Kaya lang nagamit ito na in a, in a bad sense. You, you only live once. So, tapon mo buhay mo. Try mo la, Try mo minom. Try mo no, mag-girlfriend ng sampo. <laughs> try mo mag-drugs. Try mo lahat yan. Kasi you only live once. You get it all wrong. You only live once. That's why you cannot afford no, to throw away your life like that. Serve God. Amen? Amen? Hey, you're young people. You should be attending the prayer meetings every day. It wasn't a wasted time. Every moment with God, you grow, you mature, become better. Amen? Amen? Kaya mo nga magdota, magdamag eh. Kaya mo nga makipagharutan sa messenger ng madaling araw eh. Kasi hindi mo kayang ibigay yung oras na yun sa Panginoon. Remember your Creator in the days of your youth. Consecrate your time. Redeem your time. And finally, number three. I'm almost done. Can, you, can somebody come up? The last key to consecrating your life, get missional. Say it with me, get missional. Consecrate your purpose. Get missional in your life. What do I mean by get missional? From the word mission. 
Okay? You know, you need to understand your life. Listen, listen. Your being in this world, your very life has a purpose. You have to live your life with a sense of mission. Okay? It's amazing that from the very beginning, Jesus' ministry was marked with a sense of mission, was marked with purpose. Opening, opening lines of Jesus. The first time Jesus speaks in his, you know, in his what you call public life, public ministry. Okay? You can find it in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The first account of Jesus talking, speaking into the crowds. This is what he said. He opens, the, he opens a scroll from the book of Isaiah and reads the verse. Okay, Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for He has anointed me. What, what do you mean by anointed? He has consecrated me, separated me, set my life apart. For what? For this purpose. I mean, yeah, to proclaim the good news. To proclaim the good news to the poor. This world needs to hear that there is a good news. That despite the fact that life is bad and sometimes miserable, there is still a good news that we have a Savior. Jesus said, this is my purpose. There is a good news to tell everyone that there's something good. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners. Hey, Jesus outlines the very purpose of His work. Hey, he summarizes His life into this first message that He speaks to proclaim the good news, to set, no, to, He sent me to proclaim the freedom to the prisoners, to recover sight to the blind. In other words, to give people vision, to, to give people the capacity to dream. Mangarap! set the oppressed free, to heal the broken heart, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. In Luke chap chapter 19, verse 10, again, he reiterates his purpose. Sabi niya, for the Son of Man came to seek and save those that are lost. Hey, get missional! Don't just, don't just live 2019 just like the other years. Okay lang, wala lang. Hey, don't just come to church and be blessed by the word. Get missional. The church wasn't established so that we could come every Sunday. No. The church was meant to be a movement to seek out people who are lost, who are suffering, who needs a savior. Be part of a church as a movement, not as a Sunday service. Get involved. No, no, don't get involved. Commit. Commit to a ministry. Yeah, I challenge that much. Be missional. No? Every Sunday, we set up those things. These are people on a mission. They don't get to preach. They're on the sidelines. But you know what? Sometimes, apat lang sila. But they're faithful. They're missional. No, may mga tao, mapapansin nyo, tumatayo para to, to secure us. Nagbabantay. Those are volunteers. Some of them are business people. Some of them are professionals. And yet, they're, you know, they have the sense of mission. Okay? They're ushers. Those are volunteers. Okay? Those people involved in the multimedia, the worship team, big Hey, you have talents, right? You have abilities. No, if, if you're into sales, that means you're good at convincing people. When was the last time you convinced somebody to give their lives to the Lord? If you're into branding, into marketing, you know, you brand, when was, no, maybe, maybe your talents are needed in, in helping, you no, know, helping the church to have a brand, okay? Whereby the world will be able to see the church as a beacon of hope. You sing, you play an instrument. You know, one of my one of my dreams is to really have a band that's no not 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 just the regular. I appreciate the we have the drums and the guitar and the bass and the keyboard. But it would be nice if if 
maybe yun nga eh, maybe, maybe some of you, one of you has a talent for violin or trumpet. Diba? If you can sing, eh, ang pangit naman kung nakakapangdinig lang ng boses mo. Kung yung bo, alam mong kumakanta ka, may boses ka, tapos hanggang karaoke ka lang. Anong purpose nun? Mga 100, tapos papalapangan ng karaoke. Di ba? Kung wala ka naman boses, magkaraoke ka na lang. Huwag eh, muna kami idamay, di ba? Eh, pero kung may boses ka, di ba? What is the best use of a voice? If you have a singing voice, what's the best use of it? Don't you think God gave that voice to you so that you could sing worship? Be missional! Are you there? Contribute, advance God's kingdom. Have a sense of purpose. Have a sense of destiny. Ravi Zacharias, one of my favorite preachers and authors, sabi niya dito, we do not live so that we can eat. Some of you, that's a revelation. Like, really? <laughs> For all of you, all, no, all you ever think is food. Like, I don't live to eat. I always thought I was meant to eat. Hey, you're more than stomach, right? You're a living person. Tama ba? Eh, tapos na Pasko at bagong taon. Tama na kain. Sabi dito ni Ravi, we do not live so that we can eat, nor do we eat so that we can live. Some people, they're just like that. They eat to live and live to eat. You're more than that. You're a human being. You're not just some creature. You're not just a dog or or cat, or, or some animal. Life is worth living in of itself. Life cannot be satisfied when it is lived out as a consuming entity. If all you ever do is, yun nga eh, you know what the world has done to us? We become consumers. Consuming entity. Yun lang eh, nagkoconsume ka lang. Even sa church eh, Consum- rather than contributor, consumer ka lang eh. Paano? Kaupo ka dyan, Pasto, I'm blessed. Consume. No, no, no. Life cannot be satisfied if it is lived out as a consuming entity. When it is filled by that which satisfies a hunger that is both physical and spiritual in mutuality, in a mutuality that sustains both without violation of either, only then can life be truly fulfilling. When it is filled by that which satisfies a hunger that is both physical and spiritual and mutuality that sustains both without violation of either, only then can life be truly fulfilling. In other words, it's when you live out your life purposefully with a sense of purpose. When you consecrate, not not just your own ambitions, not just what you want, but what the Lord wants. Ano yung binasa nating verse doon? Sabi, sabi, sabi ni Paul, don't live your lives foolishly, but understand what the will of God is. You want to live a consecrated life? Start asking the Lord, what is your will, Lord? 2019, what do you want me to do? Maybe it's something that's new for you. Maybe, yun nga eh, no? This is, Eh, you've never been this way before. You've never been... Some of you, you just have to try it out. Be part of something. You've never tried it before. You've never been this way before. Commit. Consecrate your purpose. Be careful with your life. Examine your life. Don't rush. Redeem your time. Make the most of every moment, every opportunity. Make the most of the moment you spend with your kids or your 
your parents. Make the most. Now don't rush. Take time to enjoy moments with your family. You'll never know if they're going to be there tomorrow. You'll never know. Finally, get missional. Let's be on a mission. God's mission. There's a world. There are people. Some of you, your friends, your classmates, your family. They literally have no idea who Jesus really is. They think of Jesus as a religion. They have never really experienced a life that is empowered by the grace of God. Some of them, they're in bondage. Some of you, you are in bondage. Get missional. Let's pray. I want you to stand up. challenge you. Consecrate. Consecrate your life. Consecrate your thoughts. Surrender. De dedicate. Set your life apart for Jesus. The best way to live life is for God. The worst way to live life is for yourself. <laughs> the worst way to live your life is to be selfish. The best way Give your life to God. Surrender to God. Think about your life. I want to. I want you to think. I want to give you some time right now to meditate on these three things. Examine your life. Have you been living your life? Have you examined your heart? Examine your thoughts. Examine your actions. Is it the will of God? Nasa kalooban ka ba ng Diyos or just simply doing your own thing? What have you been watching lately? What have you been What have you been spending your time? Life is fleeting. Remember your Creator in the days of your youth. Best time to serve God is when you're young. If you don't know, if you don't know, then be honest about the Lord. Be honest to God. Tell the Lord, Lord, I want to know your will. Just admit that you don't know what to do. That sometimes, some, so many times you don't know what, what is God's will for your life. Then tell the Lord. Be honest right now. Tell the Lord, Lord, I want to know your will. I want to know your heart. I want to know your purpose for me. Let there be a stirring in your heart right now. Let there be a stirring of fire. Let there be a fire. A fire coming from God. Let it consume your mind. Consume your thoughts. Consume your actions. God. God. Lord, let there be more of you and less of me. More of you and less of me. More of you. God. I, I believe. I believe God. God is just doing something in your hearts right now. There's some of you. There's there's some of you. you know, it is really a call to consecrate, to to separate yourself from wrong things, from sinful things that have you have been doing in the past. And, and, and you know what? Sometimes it really takes a firm decision. Eh? 
when, when the Lord told Joshua, move, it means no, to, to, to get out from where you are, to leave, to leave something behind. Okay? The moment you move, no, you're actually leaving something behind. And, and some of you just have to make that decision today. Leave, leave that bondage. Leave that sin. In a way, those things have no power over you. Why? Because Jesus has already died for you. He has, he has already set you free. It is a matter of you making that decision to leave, to consecrate, to set your life apart. To be careful in your walk. To make use out of your opportunity for the days are evil. And to understand His will and His purpose. If, if that is you and you want to just maybe rededicate your life, tell the Lord, 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 I'm making this decision. I'm committing. I, I, I'm committing to your purposes. Just, just, if that is you, just lift up your hand. I'd like to pray for you just all over the place. Go ahead. Just, just lift it up before the Lord. Don't, don't raise it up to me. Just raise it before God. Go ahead. Just surrender your life once again. Surrender. Offer your life. Go ahead. Ask the Lord for more of Him. More of Him in your life. Less of you. Less of your selfishness. Less of your pride. Surrender right now. Come on. Come on. God, come on. More of you and less of me. More of you and less of me. Father, Father, as, as we lift, as we lift our hands to you, God, Lord, we, we make this surrender. We make, we consecrate our lives. We consecrate our actions, our thoughts. We consecrate our time. And Lord, we consecrate our, our dreams. We consecrate our purpose. Lord, let your will be done in our lives. This 2018, Lord God, let it be that we will not just begin well, but indeed we will finish strong. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a clap, come on.